you grew up in the 2000s flash game era like me, playing on mini clip, armor games, new grounds, and cool math games, then you probably have heard of the name Script Welder. For many people, it's like a legendary name because he's made some of the most unique games you'll ever find even outside of the Flash game space. And I was happy enough to find his work through a Markiplier video. Welcome to Don't Escape. Now, I absolutely loved Script Welder's Deep Sleep series. It was really awesome, a lot of fun, and I enjoyed it so much that I had to check out his other games. So here's this one called Don't Escape, which actually sounds interesting, but it's highly rated, so I'm ready to go. He made the Don't Sleep trilogy, he made the Don't Escape trilogy, which we're going to be talking about, and the fourth Don't Escape game, which deserves its own video. I'll go over these in another video if you guys like this. Just let me know through leaving a like and subscribing not to miss the stuff. It really helps me out in the algorithm. And let me know what you think. I love talking about this stuff. Flash died like five years ago and I was really sad about that. But I found out that some of the Flash game developers have actually uploaded their work to Steam. And I was so happy when I found out that all of Script Welder's games are on there. And I just bought them because they were only like four quid, which is around five dollars. And I just wanted to support the developer because he's given me so many amazing memories. But I was really surprised when I actually got around to playing them. These games have held up so well and I think I even appreciate them more now that I've grown up and I can appreciate all the little details. And for me, it was one of the first games that did environmental storytelling and mystery really well. And I think it's still one of the most impressive games to me in that aspect. Now, all three of the games do it really well, but you can see a progression in his writing ability over the trilogy. I loved the environments in all three of these games and all of those came with new mechanics which is amazing because you actually feel those changes in the story. They actually affect you and make you act in a way that those, those variables are now a real thing in your mind. So for example in the first game you're, you're just in a hut, it tells you you're a werewolf, you found this empty hut and you need to lock yourself up because it's going to be the full moon tonight and you don't want to eat anyone. So you're going around this abandoned hut and there's just items you're picking up. There's a room that's quite dark. There's also a paper on the table which tells you about this spell that'll make you exhausted. So there's little bits just around the place that you need to look, look through and check out. And it was quite fun looking at the combination that I needed to make of preventative measures uh, to get to the 100% ending. The next game, it was a zombie game, so I was sold instantly. But in this game, he leveled up so much. You have a friend who's bleeding out in your building that you need to deal with. You're now expected to have a zombie horde coming to kill you at the end of the day. So instead of it being unlimited time, you have from the morning till the night. You also can leave the house that you're in and go to points of interest across the map, which also take travel time. Now in this, there are companions that you can pick up and they help you by improving your speed in these time consuming acts. And you can do that in different ways. Each of the locations that you visit has its own story that it's telling and the companions that you pick up also have their own stories. Now Jeremy's story is kind of dumb. He just loses his glasses in some weird hole in a supermarket floor but the priest father bernard actually has a really beautiful story which is actually reflected in the gameplay the solution to get him to join you is so perfect and i think a great word to describe this is poignant <laughs> and the endings here they get affected by all sorts if you shoot a gun off the more zombies show up if you uh have companions it actually factors in what happens those, to those companions like in the one I'm showing on screen. Jeremy gets murdered and me and Father Bernard uh, walk off into the sunset. And next we head out into a murder mystery on a spaceship while the oxygen's running out. You see how many mechanics are there? And that's what's awesome about this game. It's a little overwhelming to first timers because there's so many different mechanics, but I also think that's its strong suit. It just needs some getting used to. Your attention split the whole time between all of the different mechanics and, and goals you need to focus on. Who committed the murders? What's this weird crystal thing growing in the ship? 
how do I get the oxygen back up? And I love how they included the time constraint again, but you can actually extend the oxygen timer with your actions. The locations here, it's just one spaceship, but each location is very important and the majority of the ship is blocked off at the start where you have to gain permissions and ask access cards to actually get in there. There's always this question of what happened here. And one of the rooms is very scary when you first enter it, especially. And I feel like in this game, he went a bit overboard on the solutions and the puzzles because some of them are hard to deal with and it's really confusing what to do with certain items but it's still really like, you know, a nine out of 10 is a nine out of 10. And I love how you can put sunglasses on. It's so funny how it shows you in the top left. The ending here isn't like the other two. It actually has multiple endings depending on the choices you make. And that's what makes this special. There's a lot of lore in this. You read data logs and look at camera footage and all sorts. And you're trying to figure out what happened on the ship, what's going on right now, and what could happen in the future to decide on what the best courses of action are. And after I was done with the trilogy, I got my wife to play it too, who had no idea about them. And she also had that same experience, and it's a great game to watch people play. I've seen it on YouTube, and I've done it in real life. It's just so enjoyable looking at how people solve the puzzles, or are trying to explore around and figure stuff out. The problem solving and exploration and discovery in these games is so interesting because all of it's just in the environment you just explore this environment and it's point and click it's crazy how base it is the graphics are really pixely all you do is point and click to go into different rooms and stuff but it works so well it's actually such an immersive experience and i think the bit that really pulls people in and makes them fall in love with these games is simply the non-uniformity. You do not need to do everything right to finish the game. You can literally start the game and choose to end it and you'll get your own ending. I think that's really beautiful. And even watching her was a great experience too because the problem solving, the exploration, the discovery, the, the story in the environments, it's just so, it's just so gripping. And it's awesome to see somebody else problem solve and discover different things and try stuff out. It just gives you so much creative freedom. I know it's got specific answer to 100% thing, but you really have to go through trial and error and really use your mind to figure out what's possible. And it really rewards people like me who are super thorough and just click everywhere. I'm a, I'm a huge loot goblin and it feels really good to be me when I'm playing these games because I'll be doing something that usually the developers don't care about. But a lot of the time it rewards people like me who are looking into everything and questioning stuff. And then there's the calculations in the end. I love this bit. It's so tense and you just like hold your breath. It tells you exactly what you did. So you boarded up the house. 20% gone and then it goes down and then it goes on to the next you've put traps in front of your building 10 zombies gone and it goes down and the whole time you're just sitting there like oh my god okay there's 25 zombies left or there's 50% left and how many other preventative measures did I take that makes the result even more intriguing because a lot of the times you'll have missed something and then you'll think at the end I've done everything I can and I think that instant feedback and constructive criticism really gets people going like okay I did this really well and these items I didn't use in the game that I thought were kind of useless maybe I can find a use for them or I can change what I do so for example I won't use a tool to break or kill this I will keep it because it's a one use item and I think it might be more useful on something else it's so fun and creative I just love it. Make sure you buy the game on Steam. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a like. It really helps me out. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future recommendations. And I'd love to hear what you thought about this game once you play it. And also what you thought about the video. Please give me some good criticism so I can improve. And tell me what you want me to talk about in the future. See ya.